Kimberly Chafee from Kimberly's Quoting and Sewing. This week we're going to review the book Stripology using the new Stripology ruler and we're going to make this great mini quilt. Here we are cutting our strips for our new project using the Stripology ruler and the Stripology book and my preliminary run through the book looked like the instructions are well written so we're going to actually work through a project find out if they are, if it's for a beginner or you need to be more advanced, however we figure this out. Um, these are going to be one and a half inch strips because she uh, is showing the mini versions on the front cover. And I thought, well, I like mini stuff, so we're going to cut it as the way she's doing it. So all this, I think, um, we'll look back and see if it could be adapted to two and a half inch strips. But as far as scrap busters, those kinds of things, uh, this is, I think, going to be a really great ruler. So... We're going to start by trimming off this edge here. I'm just going to take a little bit off that edge. That way I can get a good starting cut. And you want to make sure that your blade is very sharp. Uh, you're, I'm going through right now uh, six layers, so three fabrics folded in half, because uh, that's how that needs to happen. The ruler is only 14 inches wide. So my fabric's folded in half, uh, and you know what? The math on that is wrong. That's 12 layers I'm going through, so yeah, I can do math, right? So here we go. Uh, we're going to cut our one and a half inch strips. I'm going to make several cuts, and it's well marked on the ruler where I need to make my cuts for one and a half inch strips, and um, they have a star to delineate that. And then for two and a half inch strips, there's a little square, so you don't actually have to sit and do the math in your head every time you cut. You could just follow each star crossed, and you know you're going to be able to get the correct cut. So we're going to cut our one and a half are three, five and a, uh, four and a half, what's wrong with me today, six, and seven and a half. So I made those cuts, we'll move the ruler off here, and we have success. So very happy so far with uh, the basic part of the instructions for the project we're making uh, out of the book. I understood uh, the beginning chart where we're supposed to be making our cuts and we'll proceed to the next set of cutting. As you can see, we've sewn our first five strips together and uh, kudos to the author Gudrun for giving us a finished width measurement. Uh, this is supposed to measure five and a half inches and when I originally set and uh, sewed mine and then pressed it all one direction like she told me to do in the directions, I was a quarter inch shy, so I went back and I opened up the seams, and now I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be. Note to self, going forward, I will move my needle over uh, to make sure that I'm using a scant quarter inch now that I know that we're pressing all in the same direction. I had read that, but for some reason it left my mind when I was actually doing the sewing. So I'm going to move my needle over so I get more of a scant quarter inch that should fix the, the problem of being short when I press all in the same direction. But it we're at the point where we're going to take our strip that we have just made uh, using the five one and a half inch strips. I've pressed all the seams open. I was finding that I was pressing in one direction. I wasn't getting the finished width of five and a half. So I went ahead and I pressed all my seams open. And I'm going to make sure that this is nice and straight here at the bottom. I'm lining everything up with the ruler. And the instructor wants us to make three cuts. So I'm going to shave off this edge first because it's not quite even. So there's that. I'm going to let that sit there. And then I'm going to cut my five and a half inch strips. So one, two, and three. Voila. Set that aside. This and this goes away. And we have three blocks ready to uh, get into our next step, which looks like we're going to put on corners, making them snowball blocks. So that'll be really fun, and we'll get right onto that. Part of putting our blocks together includes cutting 80 squares, one and a half inch by one and a half inch. We already, in another step, cut one and a half inch strips. The idea of cutting 80 squares to me seems so overwhelming and time consuming. I'm finding though with this stripology ruler, which I just knocked out another project with, that this definitely makes things go a lot faster. So we're gonna go ahead and follow the stars right down the ruler because they are marked at one and a half inch intervals. And I'm gonna show you how fast I can cut, and actually it's gonna be 84 squares. This is a 42 um, inch piece of white fabric folded in half. 
already did the math to make sure that I'm going to be able to get enough of the squares out of these three strips. So we're going to whack out 84 one and a half inch squares just like that. Here we go. And all I have to do is look for the stars that are marked onto the stripology ruler. Look how fast we're cutting 80 squares. Prior to having one of these rulers, I would have not done this project because I do not want to spend time cutting 80 one and a half inch squares. There they are, ready to go. How exciting is that? At this point in our process, we are to be marking lines with uh, on the back of our little one inch, one and a half inch squares. I have this tool called the quick quarter ruler that I love for when I have to do uh, half square triangles. But we're going to use it in this project as well. This is the 12 inch ruler here because I can lay this down and I'm going to use my friction pen to mark. We're supposed to be marking a line diagonally on our square. So I have to do 80 of these. And yes, that's going to be time consuming. Uh, but it is important to mark these lines. Uh, the idea of eyeballing a diagonal line uh, across your, your fabric, because we're going to be making these into snowball blocks, our, our strips here in a minute. The idea of trying to find the perfect straight line every time without having to mark these um, is not going to probably turn out very well. So take a few minutes. Like I said, I use my quick quarter ruler, which I use for a lot of other things. Um, it's going to help me just mark that line. I have my friction pen, which if you haven't had the experience of a friction pen yet, I suggest you get one. Uh, this line will disappear with a mark with a heated iron. Um, it is also a ballpoint pen that you can erase uh, with. So the pens are great for marking. The only suggestion I make is that you watch it on batiks. I have known a few instances where on a batik it does not disappear very well and it leaves a white line when the heat uh, from the iron hits it. So this is our friction pen. It has a great ballpoint um, marker on it, very thin. It can fit in my little slot here uh, that I'm going to uh, use here to mark my, my triangles. So one of the things I wanted to share with you was how to keep these corners absolutely square once we have the uh, corner square sewed down. So I've sewn diagonally here and it always tells you in the instructions to go ahead and trim this away so that this seam right here on this side of the sewing line is trimmed away. This would go away to just be a quarter inch. Well, finding that I never seem to maintain a square, I've decided through the years to just leave that intact and press it and then I go back and um, trim that away. It keeps me from stretching it out of place and because the blue fabric is already squared I know that once I press this into this corner I'm gonna have a square corner so many times I've trimmed that away and found that when I pressed I ended up stretching the fabric out of place and lost my corner it it was never perfectly at a 90 degree angle like it should be so just a little bit of advice there uh, go ahead and leave that intact don't trim it right away uh, if you, for years of experience, have had not a problem with that, then do it your way. But for beginners, um, I think this is just the, the smartest way to keep this corner intact. Now that I've pressed that down, I'll peel this back and I'll take my scissors and, or my rotary actually and I'll probably just trim that away um, and, and leave that that way. So that, but now you can see I still have a perfectly square block but did not stretch that out while I was pressing. At this point, we're having a great success putting together our blocks for this one and a half inch strip mini quilt. I wanted to point out that this also ha comes with a chart and the book so far has had great instructions as far as the cuts and subcuts. The next thing I wanted to point out to you as I'm putting our blocks together with our bars and our sashing pieces, is that in the instructions, she makes a very good note to press a certain direction. And I'm gonna back this up just for a second so you can see. Okay, right here, this bar is getting ready to be put to this row of, of blocks, okay? And it says in there to always press the seams towards the background sashing rectangles, both with the block rows and the sashing post rows. 
that's very, very important that you understand those instructions completely because what that means is when you're going to, this is the block row and this is my background uh, piece here. When I'm pressing that, I'm gonna make sure I'm pressing towards the centers, towards the centers, towards, the, towards those white strips, okay? When you're on the posts up here and you're getting ready to put them on, notice that I've pressed again towards the white post, again towards the white post, because what's gonna happen when I put this uh, post row to this block row is these are going to interlock at the seam. And what that means is, is that when they come together, just like that, these are going to lock. I'll pull this back so you can see it completely. But this is going to lock together right here. So as I'm sewing, I'm going to end up with my rows matching to perfect points. Again, I'm going to lock that in. So it's very, very important that you understand what she means when she says press those to the background sashing. Um, at the first, I missed that in the, my first set of, of rows, but then I caught on because to me, they always should lock. When you're pressing all one direction in one row uh, or you're pre and you press the other direction in the other row, those seams should lock uh, at, your, at your intersections. That's what helps you get perfect matching points as you sew down. So I wanted to point that out. Great instructions on her part. I had a whole lot of fun making this quilt with the Stripology ruler and the Stripology book instructions. I think for an advanced beginner or somebody that has uh, a friend to help them if they are a beginner, this is a great project book. There's a lot of projects in the book. It's extremely well written and the instructions are just easy to follow. So I think that you have great success with this book and the Stripology ruler in and of itself I think is a great ruler if you have uh, scraps that you want to go ahead and cut down and piece together. So I would definitely recommend this book and I hope you've really enjoyed going through it with me. I know I really enjoyed making this quilt and look forward to doing more projects with the Stripology ruler and the book. We hope you've enjoyed our review of the Stripology book using the Stripology ruler. Please like and subscribe for more videos from Kimberly's Quilting and Sewing.